simple Hulk sled in a gear closet. And what we'll do is get this all set up. Okay, here it is, up close and personal, all set up, the DIY simple Hulk sled. And I got this idea after watching several YouTube channels and several methods of uh, putting together your own Polk sled. And I will post their names and their links across the bottom here and also uh, in my comment section. But the idea I came up with, and it was after thinking about how I wanted to use a polk sled, and more than anything, how often. Um, I was thinking maybe I would probably use a polk sled for uh, overnight snow camping several times a season. So I thought, I'm really not going to use one that often. So I thought, well, for this season anyway, I'll just uh, put one together with the least amount of uh, money and kind of go from there. All the materials that I used are from uh, your common everyday hardware store or department store. And I'll get into each of the separate elements here in just a bit, but I wanted to give you a complete layout of what it looks like, and we'll continue. So the first thing we're uh, looking at here, the first element, are the uh, polk sled poles. And these are my second attempt. I had tried another set of poles uh, and uh, they simply just didn't work. Uh, I know that you can buy fiberglass poles. Uh, those are a little more spendy. Um, a few more pieces of hardware. But again, I stayed with uh, hardware that I could just uh, buy locally at any local hardware store and this is what I came up with. The tubing or the poles is simply CPVC and what I did was I fastened CPV caps on the end, drilled a hole in the end, drilled a hold here on the side and then just uh, ran some cordage around the shaft and then up through the middle and fashioned a loop here. And then into the loop is a bow shackle, again from a hardware store. One end is attached to a loop on the sled, the other to the polk sled pole itself and you simply just unscrew the bow shackle and it will detach the pole. Simply put the uh, bolt back into the uh, bow shackle there.
tighten it up so you won't lose it. That's it. The uh, poles themselves are uh, fairly strong and flexible. I was able to, uh, while still attached to the sled and to my backpack, and I'll explain that in more detail, uh, I was able to uh, completely walk around to the sled itself while still wearing these six foot poles and they were quite flexible but still fairly strong so again we'll go into those in a little more detail next element was attaching the bow shackles to the sled itself and what I opted to do, I'm going to move this out of the way here so that we can show you uh, more detail on the sled. We will get back to this uh, bag, which is uh, pretty ingenious as well. What I opted to do was uh, tie a rope, or run the rope rather, all the way around the bottom lip of the sled. So at the end there, it comes all the way around underneath the lip of the sled. And what I did was I drilled a series of holes here, here, another one here, and another one back there. And I took the cord and I just looped it through each of the holes. So that gave me a loop that I can attach carabiners to. And up front here, the bow shackle. And my thought on this, and it's proved out to be uh, worthy because the stress of the poles are not actually pulling on the lip of the sled. It's pulling on the rope that runs all the way down each side of the sled. So the stress is taken up by the rope and not the sled along each side of the sled. This part here, uh, that's more aesthetics. I just ran the rope instead of uh, cutting it. I just looped it through. And aesthetically, I thought that it looked pretty good. So anyway, I brought up loops, attached the bow shackle, carabiners, all the way around. And that now gives me tie points for my cargo. And what I do is I take a series of these bungee cords and I can just attach them, loop them actually, I'm just going to pop these through here just to, and I can loop these and zig, zigzag them all the way down. And I'll show you later what that looks like. So, let's move on to how I carry cargo in the pole sled. What this is, is a baseball bat bag. And I got this at a uh, sporting goods store. And what is really neat about this bag is that the bag itself has shoulder straps. So that when this is tied down into the sled, I could use these shoulder straps to carry the whole thing. empty the sled 
the poles and this baseball bat bag weighs six and a half pounds so I'm doing pretty good one thing that I failed to mention that would be important in uh, my use of the sled is I will always carry my backpack with me and the sled so I would not put all the contents that I would normally carry in my backpack in just the sled. I would split the load up between the sled and the backpack. And um, in a minute I'll show you why I will continue to carry the backpack. But getting back again to this bag, it has uh, a shape that fits rather nicely the sled and again I mentioned the shoulder straps there's a main compartment that opens up all the way uh, there's a little side pocket here there's also a compartment back here that uh, has a uh, mesh and is lined inside so that uh, actually I wouldn't have to worry about uh, throwing in anything that uh, got wet and making the rest of the contents of the bag wet. And since this is a baseball bat bag, there's a compartment on the bottom that runs all the way down that would normally hold bats. I can put a fishing pole in there. Uh, I've already put my camera tripod in there. So this bag is almost a custom fit for the sled. And it's worked out pretty nice. I've already taken it out and uh, we'll see some video on that as well. So, what we'll do is move to the other end of the poles and how they attach to my backpack. Here now are the other ends of the uh, Hulk pole poles. Try to say that three times fast. And again, uh, the same setup with the uh, CPVC caps epoxied onto the end with the uh, cordage through a hole and through the hole uh, at the cap there and a loop and what I've uh, put on this end is an S beaner through some uh, webbing and at the end of the webbing are some clasps So, we're going to run this underneath the hip strap pocket. There it is. And what that does is match matches with my uh, existing hip strap belt. And again, I'll run the other pole through the other side and when I attach my hip strap I also attach the pulk strap which runs again underneath the hip strap pocket and out the back.